Hey everybody, this is Minion Soldier and this is Ship Updates. Ben Lesnick is back, the floodgates have opened, and we have all kinds of updates and all kinds of really great information. A little bit of speculation on my part uh, in regards to what's coming in the future, but we've got some really, really great stuff. So let's start off with the big news, of course. Buccaneer sale next Friday huge news very very excited about that um there's going to be a whole atv episode basically dedicated to the buccaneer including an interview with jim martin now if you don't know who jim martin is he is like a ship concept artist he did the defiant for star trek deep space nine he did the ships from star trek or starship troopers i actually learned about the starship troopers thing on reverse the verse i didn't know that but i did know about the defiant and that is really cool He's also responsible for the Scythe, the Freelancer, the Cutlass, and now the Buccaneer. So that's a lot of really cool info, but it doesn't stop there because we found out more info about the Buccaneer. Now, uh, of course, the focus is on weapons and maneuverability, as they said today. Um, one of the cool things is they were talking about uh, descriptions of the ship as to what it looks like. Oh, one more thing before I even get into that. There's going to be, uh, CIG is going to be putting up an image on Twitter and depending on how many retweets they get, it's an image, a scrambled image of the Buccaneer. So if you retweet that image, not like, not share, but retweet it, they will continuously change the image for an unscrambled image so you can see the buccaneer today if you got twitter and you're following star citizen hopefully hit that retweet button we'll be able to see the ship today now anyways they described it lando described it as a cross between a gunstar and the quinjet but when i started thinking about the quinjet it's what version of the quinjet right I mean, are we talking the cartoon Quinjet, Age of Ultron Quinjet? And I guess it's a little bit of my own kind of bias because I was kind of hoping we'd go wingless on this one. So I'm going to, you know, I'm just going to kind of disqualify the Quinjet from my imagination. But Ben went on to describe it as a cross between the hind and presumably this G.I. Joe v VTOL craft. If you remember this toy from the 80s. Um, I'm presuming that this is the VTOL aircraft that they're talking about. I mean, when they said it, this is the what immediately popped into my mind. And so, they, you know, they did say, yeah, it's going to go for an attack helicopter look, which was really, really cool because if you remember all the way back in February when they actually put up the Buccaneer thread and they were asking for people to submit ideas and images, I submitted a whole piracy show episode dedicated to the Buccaneer and saying what it should look like. I'll put the link in the description below, but you know, I used this image that I kind of photoshopped together saying, you know, attack helicopter, use the Cobra because the Cobra to me was just self-evident. I mean, even looking at this cutlass in the background here and the Cobra, it, it just fit with the whole Drake look, I thought. So, and it looks like they're going after that attack helicopter look, which is awesome, which has got me so, so excited. I cannot wait to see this thing. It is just crazy. Now, moving on. Oh, wait, wait, sorry, one more thing. One more thing about the Buccaneer. The last question on the episode was my question, thank you, Lando, where they, um... They answered, uh, when can we expect the Buccaneer? Where does it likely to fit in into the production schedule? Later this year, and they said it should be quick. Because I guess they'll be further ahead. They'll know more about making the ships by then. So, mm, later this year, so maybe beginning of next year, you could actually be flying your Buccaneer. Which, I mean, if you look at the Gladius or you, you look at the Vanguard, though, both those ships had about a year turnaround from concept sale to flyable. So, or actually, the Gladius was even shorter because the concept sale was in July and it was flyable by March, I believe. 
I'd have to go back and check, but it, it was flyable. I, I think the winter after that, I think it was July 2014 is when they sold it, or they did the concept sale, and then we were flying it by, I believe, March the next year. So, who knows? Now, moving on. Okay. The Caterpillar. Now, the Caterpillar, we, you know, we of course, ATV, we got a whole ship shape segment about that. It's worth watching. It's great. Because they really show the flow of the interior, and it is something that I am such a huge fan of. Because when you look at the Starfare, because the Starfare, of course, is empty, it has kind of um, a layout that, to me, like when I was when I was walking through it in my hangar, it was sort of reminiscent of kind of kind of like the layout, not in appearance, but the, in the layout, sort of like an early FPS level, if you know what I mean. The way it was, you know, kind of mirrored on either side and it was the same. Of course, it had that big empty space in the middle. It just felt like an FPS level to me. So it was really, really cool to see that the uh, Caterpillar just had a very straightforward layout. Not in, in any way somewhat maze-like. So it looked really, really good. Now, of course, what we saw wasn't fleshed out at all, but... We did get a subsequent image from Sandy Gardner, which is right here on the screen, which uh, is kind of like a white box, I guess, white box, gray box of the cargo loading area. Now, we've seen images like this before from, what is it, the subscriber gallery or the uh, vault, which is this image here. So it kind of lends credence to the fact that that's the side of the ship and, you know, you just kind of, it peels open from the sides and you load cargo in. But you can see that cool catwalk down the middle. It was just, it was a really great segment. So if you haven't seen it, I honestly, uh, just yesterday's ATV, it's totally worth watching uh, just for that Caterpillar segment. It's amazing. Now, moving on with yet more Drake news. Well, just a little snippet. The Herald is really, really close. So that has been... Um, a lot of really cool information about Drake ships. But now we're going to move on to something that I know is going to get a lot of people excited and then move on to something else that might get a lot more people excited. So we know that the Starfarer is in now in 2.4, which we may get sometime next week to everyone. It's It's gone to a wider release, but everyone maybe at some point next week possible. Um... The next ship, of course, is the Caterpillar. But after the Caterpillar, they are supposedly this week or next week, they're going to be, I guess next week, they're going to be beginning the gray box and white box of the Carrick. Did I say Caterpillar? Oh, yeah, no. Caterpillar, they're, they're doing it right now. Carrick is starting next week. So for those of you who are fans of the Carrick and want that ship, your ship is uh, your ship is going in. Your ship is starting up right now, and it, it is according to RTV. They said it was actually one of the most popular, I guess, of the post initial ship sales. Which I don't know. I was kind of thinking that the Vanguard would have been the most popular, but apparently the Carrick was really really popular. So that's something for a lot of people to get excited about. Now. One of the questions that uh, initially got asked, one sec, I gotta pause and sneeze. Okay, sorry, so. <laughs> one of the questions um, that was initially asked, uh, one of the people was asking um, when or where, specifically, was the Reclaimer gonna be made? Now, of course, the Re Reclaimer is an Aegis ship, so the Reclaimer would be made in the UK. But the UK is currently busy. The last update we got was that they were, you know, all hands on board for the Javelin, getting the Javelin done. Because the Idris was supposedly very, very close, if not almost done. So the Javelin is, of course, next, getting that finished for Squadron 42. But then what comes after that is, I guess, pretty much up in the air. Now... Some people were asking about what's next in the schedule in reference to the Banu Merchantmen. And it looks like the way they, they said it, they said, well, it's going to be the Carrick. 
And then there's going to be the Merchantman, the Orion, and the Reclaimer. Now, I'm not sure where the Merchantman is going to be done, whether the Merchantman's going to be done stateside or whether the Merchantman's going to be done in the UK. But, so, I guess now they, because you can't really say all of these in sequence either because the Orion, as we know, is an RSI ship. So the Orion would be done stateside. Whereas the Reclaimer is an Aegis ship, so the Reclaimer would be done in the UK. So conceivably, once the Starfarer is more or less in-game and flyable, those resources are free. So if the Merchantman is being done in the UK, wouldn't that technically mean that the Merchantman would be starting shortly thereafter? Or possibly if the Merchantman is being done in the States... Does that possibly mean that the Reclaimer is going to be done after? Now, that, that of course, it's speculation because we can't really say. But I think it is fairly safe to say that uh, the Merchantman, the Orion, and the Reclaimer look like they're next. Now, that's not the official order. That's just, I, to me, it sounded like they were just rattling off the names of the next ships. But Merchantman, Orion, Reclaimer... And, uh, you know, as a Reclaimer owner and a very excited Reclaimer owner, yeah, I'm, I'm really, really excited about that. I was, you know, I, maybe I should put a heart attack warning at the beginning of this episode because it's just crazy. I might just do that. So anyways, so... Okay, so we got some really big updates for there and some really big information, but there's more. <laughs> and this um, this is really um, speculative on my part, but it's it's something that immediately popped into my head. Um, now, someone asked about the Drake Dragonfly. And they said, oh, why is it taking so long? You know, it's just a little motorcycle, space motorcycle. Why does it take so long? And they kind of said, well, you know, some ships like the Polaris, we get on the very first pass. But some ships like the Dragonfly take longer. And then there was almost um, a little hint. And I, I really think that they're talking about the Prowler here because they, they kept mumbling the ship name because they didn't want to give it away but they were saying that you know they thought they had a look right for one ship but then they realized that they had actually copied the look unintentionally presumably unintentionally that they had copied the look of one of the ships in Elite Dangerous so they had to go back and redo it so I, I'm guessing Prowler maybe I can't really speculate as to what ship but it I don't know, Prowler, it seems like, would be the logical choice. It's, I mean, it's the only one that we really haven't seen yet. Except for possibly, like, maybe the small repair or the small salvage ship. Which, actually, you know what, that seems more logical because those were the names that they, they've been trying to hide for a while. So it might be one of those two ships. But either way... That, that was one thing that I took away from that is, you know, well, we got the Polaris on the first pass. And then, you know, they're asking, you know, when are we going to see the Dragonfly? So I'm guessing the Dragonfly quite isn't worked out. But then again, the Polaris is a very big ship, you know. Obviously, it's, it's uh, a small Corvette. So, I don't know. Like, I'm starting to think because we haven't heard about the Prowler because they're still working on the Tavaran look. The other two small ships, it seems like they've had to do a reset on at least one of them. And, but they did specifically say the Polaris is, you know, they got it in one pass. So, uh, once again, 100% speculation could the Polaris be next I don't think so but my hypocampus in the back of my brain that gets me all hyped that part it wants to really say oh my god Polaris in June so 
yeah, I I'm very very excited. The you know the next the next few months for Star Citizen are looking really really good in terms of ship development. I'm very excited about that, and I cannot wait to see the Buccaneer. I mean, the fact that they went with the attack helicopter is um, the attack helicopter look is amazing. When they when they specifically said like the hind, I was just like, yeah, that that would be. I would totally. But then again, the hind is a very big gunship, so you kind of think it would be like smaller. I don't know. I'm very, very excited to see how this all plays out over the next few months. Oh, one more thing before I go. On my last episode of the uh, the piracy show, I was talking about the Buccaneer, and uh, one of the subscribers, Blade the Demon, I just had to pause and go and get his name, made a point about the Buccaneer and its main weapon the weapon possibly um having a 360 degree rotational arc possibly it's an area of effect weapon like an emp is the main weapon now it's, it does say it's a rotational arc so it implies that it's rotating so possibly a turret but an intriguing possibility if it did have an emp right anyways i hope you guys enjoyed the show and thanks for watching quantum travel initiated